Hey everybody, it's Scott. It's seven o'clock on Saturday. Happy Saturday, everybody. How are you doing? Thought I'd have a little Ask Scott Anything photography question uh, and answer session, and maybe we'll do a few photo critiques. So with that, if you guys do have any questions, anything photography related, anything at all, ask it in the comments. I'm actively watching the comments and I'll pop them up here and answer whatever you, you wish. Um, also, we should be live on Instagram as well. We're testing out a brand new system, so we should be live on both right now. So all my Instagram followers, how you doing? Glad to finally see you live. Been looking forward to doing this for a while. Um, let's see. I don't think Instagram comments are going to show up though. If you want to get a photo critiqued in here, then let me let you know how to do that. Um, all you got to do is at the bottom of the screen, just email your photo to info at turnmeyer.com and I'll pop it right up here and we'll take a look at your photos and do some critiquing of them. So, so here I am, it's Saturday. I'm kind of bummed because with everything that's been going on, I really haven't had time to get out and do any shooting. Plus all of my favorite spots, my parks and all that kind of stuff are all shut down. Can't do any waterfalls right now because most of those are inside the national park here where I live. Um, what have you guys been shooting? Any of you guys uh, been shooting anything locally? I know there's a few people that I've talked to that have been doing like some, some insects, some birds, those type of things, squirrels. There's a lot of squirrels out obviously. Uh, springtime flowers are coming. Anybody been shooting any flowers or anything like that? Let me know what you've been shooting. Um, again, throw it in the comments section. Um, and let's, let's have some chat. Let's have some chat. I'm here. Um, anyone have any photography related questions? Feel free to hit me up. Um, like I said, I am at least say hi. Let me know you're here that you can see me. That'd be great. I keep turning cause I'm looking at the screen. Um, I'm waiting for it to warm up personally. I, this is killing me. I, I would love to get up in the mornings and go do some sunrise photos and do some sunset photos, but man, it has been chilly, really, really chilly. We actually had to cover our flowers uh, night before last because it was calling for frost. Tonight is possibly a frost again. Uh, it's driving me nuts. It's absolutely driving me nuts. Um, let's see. So again, if you have any emails you want, any photos you want me to critique, critique shoot me an email below. And uh, to the info at turnmeyer.com, I'm happy to take a look at it and give you full on critiquing for that. Um, so, hey, Walter, hey, Sherry, how are you guys doing? Good to see you earlier today. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for joining. Um, I guess I'll just talk about a little bit about what I've been doing now. As you can see, I've got uh, a whole new video setup going now. So I'm getting more into video. In fact, I'm starting to offer that as a new service now for local businesses and nonprofits, um, et cetera. Um, I'm using my same DSLRs that I use for photography um, and using the video functions on my mouse. So right now my Sony a7R III, that's my primary shooter, is my webcam right now. And I'm using my 24 to 72 8G lens as the lens that's on it. So it's working out really well. As you can see, pretty high def. Everything's uh, going well. Uh, I love it. I actually have a second uh, game capture card coming right now so I can capture my screen of another, another uh, camera. So I'm going to bring in a separate view. So I'll have two camera views. So my next one I'll be using my Sony a6300. So this will be the, the second camera that I'll use. I have a different lens on it probably. Um, I might use that more for like macro shots. Like right now when I come in close to you, you can tell that it's still focused on my face because my a7R3 is on eye focus right now. So that's always watching my face. Um, but if I do want to show you guys something close to the camera, then I'll probably have the other camera off screen and doing that. Um, again, those of you guys who just joined, if you have any photography related questions, even if it has to deal with your cell phones or your cameras or taking a certain type of shot, lighting conditions, anything like that, um, send an email, sorry, um, sorry, you can comment your questions in the comments. If you're on Instagram, you probably have to email it because I don't think the Instagram comments come through the system I'm using. Um, but if you have any photos you'd like to have critiqued, shoot me an email, info at turnmar.com. I'm actively watching it right now. As you can see, I will pop it right up. There's my email. I'm actually watching for them to pop up right now. And I will quickly bring those up and we'll take a look at those. Um, 
So some other things that I've been doing in this off time is a lot of stuff around the house, obviously, but I've built this new studio here. So I've got some of my photos in the background that I brought in from our gallery in Front Royal, and I've got some cool lighting on it as well. Another thing I've been working on is I'm going to go ahead and get my certification for drone photography for commercial purposes from the FAA. So I'll be uh, getting that certification as soon as the testing centers open back up again. Um, if there's any realtors out there that follow me or whatever that wants some real estate stuff done, I'm now doing that as well. Feel free to shoot me a message and we'll talk about it. Um, with that said, what do you guys shoot? Tell me, tell me what you guys are shooting. Obviously, you've seen I'm a Sony guy. I've been a Canon guy for many years. And actually, with that said, let me pull up something. A friend of mine, I will. I did this the other night live, and I want to make sure I do it again because I believe we it's still available. Um, let me see. Um, I don't see it right off the top of my head, but I have a um, I have a uh, local uh, a friend of mine, and I see we got one photo in, so we'll take that one here in just a second. I have a local friend of mine that's with the local Rotary, which is a nonprofit uh, area uh, organization here locally to Front Royal, Virginia. They help out our area very much, and it's a large organization. Uh, he had some camera equipment that was donated to him from Canon and was wondering if I knew anyone who wanted it. So let me pull up the details for it. I had the picture, but I can send that out to anybody who wants it. Um, I know it's a Canon 6D, so it's a full frame Canon 6D, brand new. Um, it is... Uh, comes with the charger, the battery, the strap, obviously, it's the body, as well as the EF 17 to 40 F4 USM ultra wide angle lens. Um, so, all that's roughly uh, roughly a $1,500 package, brand new. Um, maybe a little more than that, uh, but he's asking $500 for it, brand new right out of the box, no, not one shutter release on it at all. If anyone's interested in that, then feel free to shoot me um, in a private message, uh, an email to the info at turnmire.com, either way, and I'm happy to get you connected on that. It's for a really good cause. It's going to go straight to the Rotary for a really good cause, and I've got pictures of it I can send over to you from him, and um, it's, it's uh, like I say, it's a great camera. I know that for a fact. So that's a Canon 6D. Uh, let's see. Yes, Sherry, I got your pick, and we're going to check it out right now. As a matter of fact, those of you guys who've just joined, um, just an Ask Scott Anything uh, evening. So ask me anything you like photography related or non photography related. I'll do my best to answer. But obviously, if you have a photography related question, then definitely um, either email it to me or ask it here on Facebook, and I will answer it for you. So we are also doing photo critiques. If you have a photo you'd like for me to critique live online, then email it to info at turnmire.com. I'm actively watching the email. And we're going to go to our very first photo from Sherry right now. So let me pull this up. And OK, so here's our first photo from, from Sherry. Thanks for sending this over, Sherry. All right. So this is a robin in the woods. Let's see if I can make this full screen here. Okay, that's a little better. So now we can see it a little bit better. So this is a robin in the woods. Um, Okay, so what I like about this photo is obviously I love the trees and the depth, the depth of field I like very, very much. I do like this, uh, this tree here on the left. I like that and I like this one being out of focus. It's giving you some good foreground and I feel like it's kind of framing the bird a little bit. I wish the bird was looking more towards you, but you can't help that, obviously. Um, I do like the colors. Um, I wish this one little branch was not coming across the bird, but again, 
that's something that you can't help. Could you take it out in Photoshop? Yes, you could take it out in Photoshop, but you know, I know that you're more of a realist like I am to try not to Photoshop as much as possible. I do feel like you're drawn right straight to the bird. Um, I think the textures in the back of the foreground helps out with that quite a bit, as well as the color right there and the sharpness, right? That depth of field really brings you to the bird, and I like that a whole lot. I do feel like it's a tad dark to me, um, just a tad. That's something you can easily bump up in Lightroom. Um, that's just me looking at it. It could be the way to come over on my screen, but looking at it on the screen, the other screen here, it does look like to me it's still just a tad underexposed. So if you just brighten it up a little bit, I also think if you brighten it up a little bit and you put a little bit of a vignette around the corners, not too much, just very, very subtle, very feathered vignette, then it's going to bring that focus in even more to the bird. Um, but other than that, I like it a whole lot. I, I like the fact that it's in the, still more of a wintertime theme. You're not, you don't have greens and stuff everywhere because I think the colors match very, very, very well. So if that helped out, Sherry, let me know. All right, so we've got another one. Actually, I believe we have we have a light um, question from Doug O'Boyle. Hey, Doug, how's it going? How do you get back to the original photo after editing in Lightroom? So that's a really good question. And in Lightroom, um, Lightroom is considered a non-destructive uh, editing software. So what that means is your photo when you incorporate it into Lightroom is always on the same spot in your hard drive of your computer. When you're editing, you're editing above that photo in thumbnails, what Lightroom considers as thumbnails, right? So it's not like Photoshop when you save a photo, it's gonna save that same file unless you do a save as. Lightroom is always creating thumbnails and doing it. So the only way to actually get that photo out of Lightroom is to export it or to print it. Um, so the easiest way to go back to what you want, uh, when you're in the, um, the develop module, there's a history function all the way over on your left hand side down at the bottom. And that shows all of your edit history that you've done to that photo. Um, you can always go all the way back to the original one or any of the other edit, uh, any of the other ones in that time. I'm going to bring up Lightroom. Hopefully it won't be getting too fast and crazy on my laptop. Um, you're welcome, Sherry. I hope that helped out a little bit. So I'm going to bring up Lightroom right now. That's very memory intensive and I am streaming. So hopefully I might be able to show it. Um, we're going to give it a shot because the first time I've used it here on the, on the stream yard. So let's see. Then I can show you exactly what we're doing here. So in Lightroom and it's coming up. If you are in the develop module, it looks like we're still good to go. So uh, Lightroom's opening. It looks like things aren't running too slow with the stream. So I'm going to keep going the way we're going right now. I have a new PC that should be here next week so I can actually do editing on, during the stream. Okay. So we're in the develop module right now. When you're in the develop module, no, we don't want to update at this very moment, but I'm glad to see that. So when you're in the develop module, if you look down here, here on your left hand side, you will see right here is the history, history of what I did to the photo. So at any point, I can click on any of those different options that I changed and go and revert back to that. So it's showing you the complete history of that. So like right now, if I was to take the exposure and go way down, you're going to see that there's another, there's an exposure setting that just came up. So if I don't like that and I want to go to the one before it, I just literally click it and it's going to bring it back to the way it was. Now, if you want to take the photo and go all the way back to the original photo, if you look down to the bottom right hand side, there is a reset button. And when you click reset, I'm not going to do it on this photo, but when you click reset, it's literally going to take the photo and erase all of your edits to it and bring you right back to the way it was. So Doug, that's the two answers to your question. You can go back, reset, and go back completely to your original photo or on your history side over here on your left-hand side in the develop module, you can pick and choose where you want to go back to. So hopefully that helped out a whole lot. If so, just let me know. 
Um, any other questions also let me know. We've got another, we have a, a couple other photos from Walter here. All right, so here's a photo we have. Let me bring this over here and pop it up. Okay, so here's another photo we have of Woodpecker. And uh, I know he's been trying very hard to get this woodpecker. We had a conversation about this woodpecker today, as a matter of fact, because I have a couple woodpeckers and I'm a little upset that my very long lens is broken right now. So I'm not able to get my woodpeckers. So knowing the difficulty in getting a woodpecker, especially any wildlife um, that moves along, you, you have to pay attention when you're critiquing as to you know, what is the wildlife doing. Obviously, the bird here is flying slightly away from you, so it's kind of got its back turned. Now, this is good and bad in this photo because, one, you're getting to see all of the color on the back feathers and the head as well. I think that's great. I know that this bird specifically on the on its belly is absolutely beautiful, but, it's, but, but you can't guarantee how you're going to get a shot of that because the bird's going to do what the bird's going to do, right? So from a photo standpoint, we will look at it as a critique on just the photo itself here, knowing the bird is going to do what the bird is going to do. Um, so one thing that I would do with this photo, I think where it is in the photo it definitely draws attention to it. I feel like there's a little dead space up here in the, in the top, right up in this area right here. I personally would probably, I think this lends very well for a panoramic one by two ratio. And so what that means is it's twice as wide as it is tall. So if it's a 12, then it's going to be a 24 with photo, right? And so here, if you were to crop that down to a 12 by 24, and actually I can, I can show you in the tool that I have right here, um, this is just your standard, standard windows. Um, so if you were to do something a little more like that, now what you're doing is you've cut off dead space. It draws you right into the bird, but you're also showing direction. By leaving all of the space over here on the right-hand side, you're showing the bird is going to be going this way. You're actually going to bring people more into the photo that way because it's showing the direction the bird is going to go. If you just crop it down to right here, to me that's a much more boring photo than it would be if you left it wide like that. So I hope that helps. Um, we will cancel that and let's go to the next one. So the next one is another one of the bird. Now you can see underneath the beautiful colorations of the bird, like I was talking about earlier. So this one, you can see a little more. I think the exact same thing applies to this one as the last one, the exact same thing. I would, I would crop it in the exact same way. In fact, this one even more so. This one I might even do maybe an, an even thinner panoramic because the bird isn't as wide as it was in the photo before. So it's much slimmer. So now if you do more like a one by three ratio where it's very thin, let, let's try it out and see. So what I'm thinking is if we were to do something like this, and you can see the, the, I'm putting the bird right on the rule of thirds line. Um, I think this right here cuts out all of that blah back in the background and it really showcases the bird really, really well. I think that turns it into a really, really good photo. Um, you've got your depth, you've got your color there. You're definitely showing motion. You got a lot of detail in it. Um, the other thing I like is the bird is on the rule of thirds in this one. And this dark tree over here is also on the rule of thirds. So it kind of balances the photo out a little bit. I think this is one that really lends well to a one by three ratio. Try it out. It's entirely up to you. And then let's go to the B. If anyone's got any other comments, definitely send us over. Um, those of you who are joining, what we're doing is an Ask God Anything night. Um, I'll be here for a little while answering any photography related questions that you have. You can email them to me at info at turnmire.com or you can comment them on the Facebook live right here and that's coming through. If you're watching on Instagram, welcome. This is my first Instagram live that I was able to get set up to actually work. So if you have any questions and you're on Instagram or if either one uh, would like to send a photo for critiquing, just email it to info at turnmeyer.com. I'm actively watching it right now and I'll pull it up and, and we'll take a look at it. So here's another photo we've got for a critique. This one is a bee 
and I love bees. I absolutely love bees. I have a beehive outside that doesn't have any bees in it yet, so that's not great for me, but it's okay. It's all good. Um, okay, so this one is a little different. Bees are tough, especially when they're flying like this. Most people, 99% of bee shots that you're going to see, they're sitting on the flower, right? So this one is obviously flying, so it's a little tough. Obviously, I think there's a lot of dead space here. Um, the carpenter bee, yeah, I was thinking carpenter bee or uh, uh, bumblebee, one of the two, obviously. I wasn't sure which one it was. Um, so obviously with them moving like that, it's very difficult, especially to get them in frame. More than likely, you're zoomed in on this as well. So that if you're zoomed in, then that's even more tracking you have to do, and you got to be moving your camera very quickly to keep that tracked in. Right. So here, if you want to crop this down a little bit and I can tell we already have grain. Um, I know what camera he uses. He's got the A7R3. I'm assuming you shot this one with your A7R3 as well. I'm just going to assume that. So already seeing the grain here, I'm going to assume knowing the camera he's using, he's already cropped in a lot. If you crop in even more, then you're going to lose even more detail. But it'd be really nice if you just had it cropped right around here. Um, just to kill all of this dead space down here, because right now you're overloaded up in the right hand side. Now, the bee itself is right at the intersections of the rule of thirds. It's the wings that to me are killing it because they're kind of cut off in the photo. So if you had more space, I don't know what the original photo looked like. If you had a little more space, then you could leave a little bit more of the wings and cut down on the space down in here. Maybe that'll help it out a little bit. The B, I see exactly where you put it right on the intersection of the rule of thirds. I think that's awesome. Um, that definitely draws into it. It's those wings that are that, that, that line to it. So now it's just pulling you up into that top corner. So he has cropped it a lot. He says, um, I'm right. Let's see. I'll pull this comment up here. Um, he says, yeah, you've right. I've cropped a lot. This was zoomed in 400 millimeters. So that's what I thought. Um, that's exactly what I was thinking here. Um, yeah. So try that with it. Bees are tough, I've sp especially when they're flying. I mean, that, that's very, very interesting. So Doug emailed a photo for critique. All right, Doug, um, take a look at it right now. Let's pull this one up. Great. Perfect. Okay. So nice shot here. I'm going to zoom down a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take it in. So I like this shot, Doug. It's kind of hard for me to show you guys exactly everything because I can't bring the zoom down, zoom level down. Um, so there's definitely a waterfall here. I'm assuming, Doug, that the lighting conditions was in a way that you couldn't do a long exposure because you, this would be really cool if you got a little more blur in that waterfall. I mean, you've been with me in my waterfall workshop, so you know what I'm talking about. But what I really think is cool about this shot is if you were to do a longer exposure on this, not only are you going to get the blurry water of the waterfall, this ocean back here where you're getting all of your texture, you would get a lot of, of just glassy look to that. Um, a lot like the one that I took in Aruba um, two years ago, as a matter of fact. So, so this water right down in here, if you can see my, my cursor, that would also be like a flat, glassy look. It would give it a very dramatic look as well as the blurriness from the waterfall. As far as the exposure, I like the exposure. I think it's spot on. I don't see anything um, major. It's a nice cloudy day. Um, let's see. Uh, I do like the way that you left a little bit of sky up here because you've got a white out sky with not a lot of color. There's not a lot going on up here. So I would have just left that just like that. You want to show that sky. You don't want to cut it off, but you don't want to, you don't want that to overpower your photo because you've got a lot of color and a lot of detail happening down in here. Um, I do like how you left this, the waterfall itself on the left rule of thirds line. It does draw me into it. That's for sure. And I love the detail of the rocks down at the bottom. I think the only thing I would have done differently is probably going for a long exposure here. Now, the thing to think about, there's two thoughts here. One, long exposure, you got you to watch for the light, obviously. Secondly, is when you go for long exposure, obviously you're on the coastline. Obviously, there's, there's moving air as well. So a lot of this stuff up here, these, this longer grass, 
you're actually going to get movement in that. So this would probably be a prime candidate for a stacked exposure, uh, probably exposure stacking where you take one shot like this one right here, for instance, this would be the shot that you take that you freeze the action and then you take another shot where you do a long exposure and in Photoshop, and I teach this in my Photoshop class, um, you actually blend them together where you're bringing the movement into the still photo. So you can actually stop your, your plants that are moving from the wind. So that's probably the only thing I would do differently in this one. I would, I, I very much want to know where this is <laughs> because I want to go there and I want to go there at like a sunrise or a sunset for sure. Uh, this is a spot that I want to put on my bucket list for sure. So um, uh, you're in the comments. So definitely let us know where this is. And uh, I'd be very interested in that. So let's see if we got any others. Hope that helped out, Doug. Look forward to seeing you on another uh, on another workshop too. Once all this is over with, so those of you guys that have just joined, we've been doing some photo critiquing. I've been doing some ask me anything photography related. <clears throat> we had a Lightroom question come in a few minutes ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wow. Um, so if you have any questions related to photography, whether it's cell phone photography. Um, posing, you know, whatever camera types. If you're thinking about buying a camera and you got some questions on what I recommend, um, questions on shutter speed, how to shoot in certain circumstances, anything at all, just ask. You can either um, put a comment in the Facebook comments on here, or if you're on Instagram, then you can send an email to info at turnmeyer.com. Um, if you have photos that you'd like for me to critique live online, like I'm doing right now to, I think we've done four or five of them already, then definitely send that photo to info at turnmeyer.com. It's, uh, it's probably going to be easier if you attach it as a, as an attachment in that photo, then I can pull it up full screen, but either way, it doesn't matter. So, ah, Scotland, uh, that one's already on the list anyway. So now I know I have to go there. That's for sure. That's for sure. So any other questions anyone has about anything at all? What are what are we shooting these days? Anyone shooting anything um, fun and interesting? Um, should have a lot of time right now to do a lot of photography. Anyone doing any macro shots with all the flowers and stuff coming out? Any that you guys would like to show me? Also just want to remind people, um, we are still uh, in COVID-19 land, obviously. So right now, all of the classes and workshops have been pushed out and we're looking to pick them back up late May, probably. Uh, at worst, I think June is when, when things are going to come back around. But we have some really cool workshops that are, that are coming forward. Um, we've got one in August, August 22nd, as a matter of fact, and it is a wildlife. It's a raptor workshop in um, Page County, Virginia. Uh, that one's half full already. And we're going to go up to a falconry area where they're going to bring out some owls and some hawks for us to take some pictures of. But then they're going to bring their falcons out and they're going to actually fly them for us to take photos with. So I'll be there helping you with your settings and your, you know, what lens choices and all those type of things. We're going to get some really cool shots of some falcons. Um, you can register for that right on my website, turnmeyer.com. And I also want to remind people that have a very big, um, workshop in Beckley, West Virginia in November. So I'm doing a full weekend in Beckley, West Virginia, and this one is also half full already. First weekend in November, we're gonna go down on Friday and come back on Sunday. I think we're doing four to five different workshops throughout the weekend, lodgings included. It's a destination workshop, I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Beckley, West Virginia is one of my favorite areas in the country. If you're, from, if you're not familiar with it, if you're familiar with the New River Gorge Bridge, that's the bridge that they do the base jumping, parachute jumping off of and rappelling. This is that area. It's a very well known for whitewater rafting. And it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. There's tons of waterfalls tons of hiking trails, some great shots with the bridge in it. So we're going to be doing sunset, sunrise, waterfalls, all kinds of stuff. We're also going to be going to where the famous New River, I mean, sorry, the Grist Mill is in Babcock State Park. So we're going to be going in there and we're going to be doing shots of that as well. So a lot to do in, in two days there. Again, we're half full and you can register on my website. So anybody else have any comments or any questions or anything like that? We've been online now for about 30 minutes. Happy to answer anything you guys want. Is there uh, 
um, any spot that you've tell me, tell me where you want to go. Where's your biggest bucket list item that you want to go and do photography at? Tell me what that is. So I'll tell you where mine is. I'll go through some of my top ones, as a matter of fact. And when, you know, Aruba is always my favorite place to shoot, but there's some places that I haven't been that I want to go. Obviously, um, I've always wanted to do safari, so we will be doing safari here soon. Scotland has been a big one. Um, New Zealand is actually very high up on my list, as well as Alaska. I do a lot in the, in the Southwest and the Arizona and Utah range. Um, possibly going to be doing a workshop out there next year, as a matter of fact. Um, but want to hit some more of the parks out there, Yosemite, you know, the, those type of places, definitely going to get out there at some point. Um, I'm always into the outdoorsy, very, you know, I want to hit the iconic spots, but I want to do it in a different way. You won't find me very often taking the exact same shot that everybody else takes. So do I want to go and hit those famous shots? Um, yes, but I always want to do it in a different way. Uh, if you've seen my shot of the grist mill, for instance, that I was just talking about down in Babcock State Park, that's a shot that a thousand photographers have taken. Um, but I think I feel like my shot is very different in that, and I can pull that up and kind of show that to you. And I always do that. I always try to be different. When I teach my classes, I always try to be different. Um, because everybody can do the same thing. You know, everybody can do the same thing. So let me bring this over here and I'll bring up an example of what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are. So these are some of my fine art photographs that you can find on the website. Let me find the, if you see any down here, you have any questions about where I took anything, just, just jump in the comments or send me a, an email and I'm happy to talk about it. But so this shot right here, this is the grist mill in Beckley, West Virginia. You guys have probably seen this shot many, many, many times. You've seen it in fall foliage. You've seen it in the greenery. You've seen it in wintertime. This shot is, a, is the iconic shot that everybody takes. So I took this shot, but this shot really is not, you know, this is not my shot this is this is the shot that everybody takes so whenever i go someplace i always want to make it my own in some way so this is the shot that i took this is the same mill from a different angle a different look and excuse the watermark but i pulled it up quick so that's why it's there um so i like to do stuff that's very very different um you know always different angles different looks like this right here to me i actually like this better than the other shot um, plus, it's very different. So if you do want to join me on that workshop, we are going here. We're going to this mill, and it's going to be full fall foliage the first weekend in November. So it should be absolutely gorgeous. Um, I can't wait. Uh, I literally can't wait. And obviously, in, in November, the you know the COVID will be all over with, and, and things will be sort of getting back to normal. Um, British Columbia and Washington State and Redwoods. So I've been to the Redwoods. I have not been there since I started doing landscape photography, though. So I went there and I had just a little, a little point shoot camera many, many years ago. Loved it. It's high on my list to take my wife and my daughter to. I cannot wait to take them there because it's something I think everybody should see for sure. Um, definitely. And let's see. Doug says the Great Smoky Mountains. Yeah, the Great Smoky Mountains are fantastic. And, and you know, it, it kind of resembles the Beckley area, as a matter of fact. It's fantastic. So, you know, to get back to this photo, I always try to do something different. You know, a lot of people do things that are the normal. When I go places, I just like to be different. So whenever I do workshops or whatever, I'm always doing stuff, uh, stuff different. Like, you know, here's a shot from that New River Gorge area. This is the bridge I was talking about. So we will be here during that workshop, as a matter of fact. So I always try to be different and do things that not everybody is doing that, that you know, Makes people pay more, a little more attention to your stuff. So if we, uh, do we have any more comments, any more questions for me or any other photos to critique? I'll give us a couple more minutes. If not, I'll bounce off and, and say happy Saturday to everybody. Uh, 
All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be doing more of these and we'll have some different topics. I'm looking to probably bring on some guests and some guest speakers and stuff like that here soon. Uh, if there's anybody that you would specifically want me with, want me to bring on to interview and have some discussion with Q and a session, feel free to drop me a note and let me know who that would be always looking for recommendations. So thanks to those who've joined. Thanks for your comments and thanks for your photos and stay safe and have a great Saturday. Take care.